There's an old saying in human history that says, what we don't learn from our experiences, we are bound to repeat. Very important about this is if we don't have some experiences that we're aware of, then obviously we have knowledge that we're not gonna be able to use. And I say, well, there's some very important new knowledge about evolution that has come into our world in recent times. Historically, according to Darwinian theory, life has just been a continual gradual evolution over billions of years, slight imperceptible changes, but one continuous process. However, we now recognize that life was profoundly altered five times in the past by what are called mass extinctions. Mass extinctions occur when some cataclysmic event happens that wipes out up to 70 to 95% of all life on this planet. This has already happened five times. And Niles Eldridge and Stephen Jay Gould have created what is called the punctuated equilibrium theory to reveal that no, life is not one continuous progression of evolution, that there are start and stop points that have already happened five different times. What created these five mass extinctions? Well, natural events, such as massive tectonic plate movements, super large numbers of volcanoes going off at the same time, or objects from space, such as comets or asteroids, having an impact on this planet and upending the ecosystem. As we're witnessing today, there's an abrupt change in climate that's affecting life on this planet. But this is not the first time an abrupt change of climate has affected the planet, because if we go back 12,000 years ago, when the last upheaval of climate occurred, it's referred to in science as the Younger Dryas period. I say, well, what happened? Well, if you look at the temperature charts, the temperatures were relatively cold. It was a very cold period on this planet. Lots of ice all over the place. In fact, North America was essentially covered with ice. And I say, then what happened? Almost instantly, according to our record, which could have been even in one day, an event happened that raised the temperature so high that the ice started to melt. And the massive amount of ice melting led to the rising of the seas, 400 feet of rise in sea level. While we're quite aware there was some massive event changed life on this planet 12,000 years ago, there are several theories trying to accommodate how this occurred. One of them, and the predominant one at this moment, is that a comet hit Greenland and that the heat generated by this comet coming into the environment caused a rapid melting of the ice, instantaneously causing the ice-covered continents in the northern hemisphere to melt their ice. Another suggested hypothesis for the change that occurred is that massive solar ejections raised the temperature so much on the planet that not only did it melt the ice, but it burned up the organic life that was already present. And a third, an alternative possibility that occurred 12,000 years ago was a polar shift that changed the magnetic fields of the Earth and changed the ecosystem in the process. Well, very interesting, of course, is there were a lot of people here at that time because we know humans were actually here over 200,000 years ago. So there was some action of humans on this planet when the Younger Dryas period hit. What was happening? Well, we have ancient stories of a continent of Atlantis, a story about a civilization called Lemuria. Well, there's some real foundation to these stories, but we have no technical evidence of where and when they existed. But something new happened. There was a finding in Turkey in an area called Gobekli Tepe. And what did they find? There was a massive city covered up, not covered up by erosion, covered up because humans actually took dirt and rocks and took a whole city and covered it up with dirt and turned it into a big giant hill. Well, scientists found about 5% of this now uncovered. And they found that there was a massive civilization and they dated to when? Before 12,000 BC. I say, why is this relevant? Because in human history, civilization apparently only started about three or 4,000 BC in the central valley of the Tigris-Euphrates rivers in the Middle East. We can talk about the loss of a civilization in Gobekli Tepe, but we can also talk about other changes. For example, the Sphinx in the middle of the desert right now shows signs of massive weathering and water erosion. In the desert? Yes, something happened about 12,000 years ago that caused that erosion on the Sphinx. Water in the Sahara Desert? Something happened. And off the coast of Japan, divers have found sunken ruins of cities that were well below sea level. 
Now this, of course, would make sense when we understand that according to the Younger Dryas period, sea levels rose about 400 feet. So there must have been cities at the periphery of the continents that are now underwater and we can't see them. The discovery of Gobekli Tepe brings a lot of interesting questions to our understanding of the history of human civilization. But it's a very important time for us right now because there's a renaissance in knowledge changing who we are and how we got here. For example, the biggest upset of our understanding of history was the development of the Human Genome Project. For up to that point, we all believed as a fact of life that evolution was based on increasing genes and the complexity of our genome. And yet, in the results of the Human Genome Project, we find that humans don't have any more genes than some of the smallest organisms on this planet. It causes us to reconsider and review and revise history. And this is the same thing that is occurring in regard to the discovery of Gobekli Tepe. What was the point? We used to think civilization just started about three or 4,000 BC. Now we understand there were well-advanced civilizations 12,000 BC. What happened was we have lost the connectivity with those ancient civilizations. And I said, well, why is it important? Because today we are facing again another climate change situation. Most important for us to know right now is that we are now deep into what is called the sixth mass extinction of life. Yes, we are losing species of organisms on this planet faster than in the previous five mass extinctions. Now, climate change has a repeatable period over history, but what makes it a little different today is that human behavior is exacerbating that climate change. It's making it much worse, much faster, than in previous history. The way we are living on this planet and undermining the web of life, we are creating an extinction event that will include us as well. So we are deep into the sixth mass extinction. And it's important for me to let you know a very important fact, and that is this. The idea that we are being told is that if we cut back on fossil fuels and affect the environment in different ways, the climate will return back to what we would call normal. Well, let me assure you something. And climate change studies over evolution of this planet reveals that when climate change comes, it doesn't go back to normal, it just sets a new normal. And so we are leaving today's civilization and environmental system because the changes that are occurring are causing an upheaval in the ecosystem that we live in. Relevance is simply this, we are not going backwards to return to normal. We must prepare for a future. Well, one of the major characteristics of humans are that we are quite adaptable. So rather than sitting back, waiting for the climate to return, we should be exercising that adaptability to create a civilization that can thrive into the future. We don't want to become the next lost civilization. It's dependent upon us right now to secure our future. We can do something now. And that is what evolution is calling us to do. Prepare for this very uncertain future to help keep us intact and not get lost, as happened in previous civilizations when climate change came about.